Hey, what up, guys? Coming here this morning with another What's Next. This is on, um, Jesus, sorry. This is on Kiro Relic, former uh, junior welterweight champion. Uh, that's 140 pounds. He's currently my number eight fighter in the junior welterweight division at 140 pounds. Relic has been out of the ring for, what, uh, pretty close to a year now since he lost his world title to um, Regis Progray last year by a, um, by a TKO in the uh, sixth round in the semifinals of the World Boxing Super Series. Um, it, was a good, it was a good matchup. You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit better of a fight, but Progray just whipped, um, whipped Relic's ass and uh, handled him in that Super Series uh, semifinal. And I haven't heard anything out of Relic since. Um, for a minute there, he was ranked in, a, in one, or, one, or, one or two of the governing bodies at 147 welterweight. So I thought maybe he could be moving up in weight. Um, but uh, now he's not ranked in any governing bodies at all between 147 and 140. So not sure what he's going to be doing next and where he's going to be fighting. But let's run him through the top 10 at 140 and see if there's any possibilities there for uh for him so big question what's next for Kiro relic we start with number one in the division and that's undefeated unified champion josh taylor not gonna happen taylor wouldn't be interested in this even if he had uh it could choose but next he's got a mandatory defense due um so this fight will not happen number two is undefeated unified champion jose ramirez ramirez has two mandatories due and even if he didn't he wouldn't be interested in a fight with relic Number three is um, Maurice Ho uh, is Regis Progre, which would be a rematch. Um, Pro there's no need for a rematch here. Progre has nothing to prove to Relic, um, you know, so wouldn't make any sense. So yeah, no chance of a rematch here. Plus, uh, Progre looks like he's lined up for Maurice Hooker next. Number four is Jose Cepeda. You know, this fight's interesting. If he could get himself ranked in the in the WBC. Um, you know, this would be an interesting kind of an eliminator, but I don't think Relic is ready for a guy, uh, you know, like Zapata. He'd probably go in the underdog, but I just don't think he'd want this high pro profile of a match next. So I guess it'd be possible if he could get ranked, but less likely, you know, I don't, I don't think it's likely. Number five is former champion Victor Postal. Postal's lined up to fight Jose Ramirez next in a mandatory title fight, so uh, Relic isn't an option. Number six, uh, excuse me, is um, former IBF champion, uh, our former lightweight champion, Robert Easter Jr. Now, Easter, um, Easter is uh, a big, um, a big uh, option here, I think, for uh, for Relic, because Relic's fought PBC guys before. He was fighting Rancis Bartholemy before. You know, he's fought him twice. So I wouldn't be surprised if if this kind of fight got made. I think Easter might be the most likely guy that he could fight because Easter's desperate for an opponent. The PBC might say, hey, we want you to fight this guy. He's worked at them before. He might say yes. I'm going to still lean towards uh, the less likely, but it definitely could happen. Number, uh, He's number six. Number seven, former WBO champ Maurice Hooker. I guess it is possible, but I don't think it's likely. I don't think Relic wants to face a guy like him. Plus, Hooker, I think, wants to face a big name and then move up, but... You know, if, if Relic is thinking about moving up to welterweight, which I think he might, um, I think I think Hooker might take the fight. So um, Relic would have to be interested in it. And but I, again, I don't think it's going to happen more so because I'm I'm pretty sure Hooker is going to be facing off against Regis Progray next. So that's what I think is going to happen there. Number eight, uh, number eight is Relic. Number nine is is uh, Pablo Cesar Cano. Don't see this fight happening. Um, you know, I guess it could. But Cano is trying to line himself up for a WBC title shot. Um, I guess conceivably it, it could be an option, but I don't know um, if Golden Boy wants to throw him in against, uh, throw Cano in against a guy like Relic next. So I'm going to lean towards a no. Um, then the three way tie for 10th. You have first IBF champion Ivan Baryanchik. I don't see this one. Baryanchik is a tough, tough test. Um, I guess it could happen. These guys both lost in the semifinals of the World Boxing Super Series, so maybe they'll face each other. But I think for Relic, Baryanchek's too good of a fighter and not big enough of a name to take the risk on right now where he's at coming off that loss. So I'm going to lean towards a no. Um, number number um, also tied for 10th is Adrian Granados. There's another fight that I think maybe could be possible. Um, you know, Granados is a good fighter, but I don't think he's going to get a fight with a guy like Relic. Um, you know, but I think he could face him and they could face 
Uh, they could fight between 140 and 147, maybe at a catch weight or at the full weight of either division. You know, and I think this might be if he could get on Showtime with this fight, which he probably could, or a PBC card, which he would because Granados is with the PBC. I think it's a fight Relic would be interested in taking, so I could see it happening. And then the last guy tied for 10th right now is um, Rancis Bartholemy, which would be a rubber match between him and Relic. I don't think Bartholemy has any interest in this. Plus, he's going after the WBA interim title against Albert Puello. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see this one as an option. Um, especially since Relic pretty much beat Bartholemy twice, but the first time he got a gift decision when the second time Relic whipped his ass. So I don't think he wants anything to do with it. So what do I think Carol Relic's going to do next? I'm leaning towards he's probably going to face um, he's probably going to face uh, lesser opposition, somebody out of the top 10. It could be anywhere between 140 and 147, depending on what he wants to do next. Um, he should return at least once this year. Um, you know, hopefully he can work himself into some kind of an eliminator. I'm not sure he's cut out for 147, but if he wants to take the chance there, he could. I still think he can make an impact or a dent or at least make some good money fighting at 140 because he's still a solid fighter. And I just hope to see him back sometime soon. Um, most likely opponent in the top 10, I think there's two, either Robert Easter or Adrian Granados. Because he's working with the PBC, I could see him getting in the ring with either one of those. So that's what I think. That's the what's next on... Kyo Relic, former world champion. I hope you enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.